Good afternoon YouTube, welcome back to my channel. This is going to be part two of this video series, um, probably part two of two. We are going to be repotting this Stanhopia today. This is a Stanhopia Tigerina. Uh, it's in desperate, desperate need of repotting. This thing has been in here for years. Um, I'm not really sure what the roots are going to look like in here. I um, did a video on this just beforehand, like, like I ended it seconds ago and it was about um, the problems that this plant had. I pulled it out. It did have some scale, which I've taken care of. Showed you guys what dead scale looks like because there's no live scale on it anymore. Touch wood. And now we're going to um, unpot this guy. Check out the roots, which I'm not going to be um, thrilled about, I'm sure, because this guy has been tucked away for so long. It is just a solid, solid mass here. So look at this plant. It is huge. And I'm just going to start undoing the wire. This thing is so old that the original wire that was on it rusted off and I just um, quickly repotted or re-hung um, it with this floral wire here. So if you did watch the last video, you're going to know that this plant did have scale. You'll probably still see little bits of scale on this. Um, if you watched the last video, you'll also see how I showed you that the scale is pretty much dead. There's nothing, there's no life left in the scale. I'm just working on getting the wires out. There's the hanging wire out of this plant, so we'll get rid of that for now. But yeah, you might still see little bits of it. You'll probably see little bits of it everywhere because um, we're going to be digging into this plant pretty good today. Now, let's see. The tough part. I, I really don't want to divide it, but I fear I'm going to have to. This guy here is planted just in moss. And these plants, they have, I have these big holes in the bottom of the pot because they have spikes that come down the bottom of the pot. Their spikes don't go up for Stanhopias. So you need to hang them or you need to have some sort of net pot or wooden basket. Today I'm going to try something new. I'm going to hang it in one of these. This is a coconut husk sort of fiber. It's a nice hanging pot. And yeah, we're going to use a moss-based media in this. This is going to, the coconut is going to allow the, the moss to dry from all sides, so I think it should be a fairly wet media like moss. Not much bark in there at all, if any. And yeah, so we're going to try to put it in there in one big piece if I can. It's definitely a big upgrade. We're probably in a 5 or 6 inch net pot, and we're going to go into a 10 or 12 inch hanging basket. But let's have a look, see if we can get this apart. Oh, that was pretty easy. So, there we go. I was fearing that part. But no need to fear it, I guess. Broke off a few little roots in there. But let's get rid of that. So we do have roots, so that's a good sign. They, um, we have some healthy roots. As I say, this has been in here for years. So you can see what a healthy root looks like. It's white, has a semi-transparent tip to it. And yeah, I'm sure when we get into the core, because the plant's growing outwards, all the old roots from the old pseudobulbs that may not even have leaves anymore are going to be gone. That's just going to be a natural part of, of life for an orchid. You can see this area here has no new growth on it. we got some wood bugs in there. It was sitting outside. But anyways, um, <clears throat> no new growth this way, so there's going to be some unhealthy roots here. And I think what I'm going to do is take it to the sink and try to spray it off. Try to work out some of this. It's amazing what a jet of water will do for a plant that is so twisted and tangled up and hard. The last thing you want to be doing is really ripping at the roots because then you're going to be breaking the, the good roots as well as the um, other roots. Sorry, I think I kicked the camera. So, look at that. A bulb actually grew upside down in it. There's up. And this bulb was pushing so hard against the bottom of the pot, it... Um, grew upside down and it's, it's an old bulb because the leaf is gone. I must have pulled it out years ago as a dead leaf coming out of the bottom of the pot. Don't even remember doing that. But anyways, let's go over to the sink and, and blast away for a minute. Okay, over at the sink, hopefully you guys can see that because that's about as close as I really want to get the camera. And... I'm probably going to bump the camera with the hose a few times, so if you jiggle around, that's what's happening, is I'm just hitting it with the hose. Put it on jet, and you'd be surprised on it with a jet of water, how much the roots can actually take before there's any kind of damage. So I'm going to try to spray this. I've got no real game plan here. 
whenever you repot anything, it's always just sort of, you, you take each individual plant as it is, and um, you kind of got to figure out the best way to do it. So this often works well for me. Clears out all the old stuff. The reason that was like super old, there's like a piece of cocoa husk. I haven't potted with that in years. And it was just like trapped in the, the top two of the bulbs. I'm probably gonna have to divide this down the middle. I'm probably gonna put both divisions back in the same pot. But in order to get the media out of the core of it, it's probably gonna have to be um, done now. I don't know if there's a natural division or not for this. I don't wanna end up with dozens of plants. So it's just solid. Try to soften it up a bit more. Why don't I go ahead and continue working on this because it's going to be a bit of tedious work for now, and then um, I'll bring I'll turn the camera back on in a second. We'll see how I get. Okay, I'm still working on it, but I'm getting near the core of the plant. Um, a lot of dead roots in the core. And the dead roots are going to be very squishy compared to the live roots. And in this case, they're a much grayer sort of color as well. So I'm sure they'll contrast nicely on camera. But yeah, there's lots of old roots. As I said, the, the roots from the center of the pot are many years old. And once those bulbs sort of have done their thing and died back, they, um, they're not needed for as much anymore. Roots don't stay healthy in orchids forever, not like a tree. But... I think pretty soon, I'm just going to keep working, pretty soon I'm going to be sort of coming up the top side of the bulbs, and it works very good just to keep cleaning it out like this. That's all I've been doing off camera, just spraying it like that. I got scissors in the sink now, and I cut a little bit of the dead roots away. It's really important to get the dead roots out because they are going to be acidic. Same with the media, that's why we need to try to get as much media out as we can. We want to get rid of that acidic media. So the new roots don't just um, go sour and rot in that media as well. So I'm going to keep working. Okay, a few more minutes have passed. Cleaned out a bit more media down there. But I really need to find a division to break this here. Just a natural sort of division going across. It's really it's a big plant. So hopefully we can work in here. Remove some of the oldest pseudobulbs once I get in there. And... I'm just going to go with a pair of scissors in between them and cut through a little bit. Now I'm trying to avoid directly cutting into the bulb. I'm just trying to make almost like a dotted line. And there you go. Just with a couple precision breaks. Hopefully that wasn't off camera. I was kind of working hard there trying to get it. You can remove some of the old bulbs. I just give them a twist off. And there's that's going to be so much easier to clean now. So let's give this another spray. And I think we're getting closer to um, having a cleaned up plant. Years of neglect. All right, I'm almost done in the sink. I have washed up the other smaller section as well. Just doing the last finishing touches. I could still keep getting a bits of media out of here if I wanted to. But I think I got most of the media out. And without dividing it again, because I don't want to divide it again, um, I think we got most of it. So there's a lot of perlite in the... Um, the leaves and stuff now, so I'm just going to give those a rinse off. Like so. And we're not left with tons of roots. There is there is some fresh ones. Obviously the older bulbs in the middle, their roots are going to be um, much worse off than the newer bulbs on the front edge. So we're going to be relying on the newer bulbs roots to, to carry us through. But I think with a bunch of new media as opposed to media that was years old, this plant will make a full recovery. So let's move back over to the potting area. And we're back over at the potting area. So here is my new pot. This is sort of a test. I haven't grown any orchids in these things long term, but I think it will work quite well, especially for the um, new spikes that come out the bottom. And it um, just makes a nice hanging basket. And this media here is, well, it's media, it's coconut husk, so it will eventually break down, but just like the rest of the plant does, or just like the rest of the moss does. And by that time, it'll all need to be replaced again. So I have a big pile of moss here. So we'll start with a big pile of moss, see where we're at. I think what I would love to do here is 
to sort of wrap the roots a little bit in moss to give them a bit of a head start. So I'm going to take some moss. I'm going to shove it up and under, just like so. So this is up and under. Then I'm going to take some more moss and shove it in front and just make sure those roots are nicely covered, but safely covered too. We don't want to just be crazy packing the media around and it'd be damaging roots at the same time. So I can tell already that we'll need a lot more moss in there. But that's sort of one half done. You see how I just sort of wrapped it up in the moss and I'm going to wedge it into that half. Hopefully it wasn't, won't fall over. At least not too bad. It is going to fall because it needs the other side in there. Let's see. Um, big stretch. Hold on. Block of wood behind it maybe. We'll just keep it from falling over somewhat. And that worked really well. I've used that technique before of just wrapping the roots sort of thing instead of packing it around it. Make sure you get up and in. So, and the key will be once both pieces are in to pack the moss tight enough that it can't go anywhere. So I'm just going to grab some more moss from our heat and I'm going to kind of just pack it in underneath there. So you can see how I'm just putting it up and in the shape of it. We'll turn it around. Now, I don't want to crush all those roots. They're used to hanging out together anyway, so that's not going to hurt. I'm going to wrap that like that. Grab a bit more moss and gently put it over those roots there, just like that, to cover it up. And we're going to put this piece back in the hole. The other hole that I created. So, I've been working with moss quite a bit again lately. I'm sort of Every year I, I try different things until I've tried everything so much that I um, find one that I really truly love more than the rest. So I've been working with lots of moss lately. You can see how that's already nicely standing up again, looking pretty good in there. And I'm finding there's, as long as you pack it just right, if you pack moss too tight, it um, doesn't hold enough water. And if you pack it too loose, it um, holds too much water. If you can just find there's a happy medium with moss and being that this is going to be able to get air from all sides I don't think anything is going to be too anaerobic in the center. I would not want to have a big bowl this big and be using just straight moss that only has a few drain holes in the bottom. I think that would just take forever to drain out and you would rot your roots but in this case or in a basket sort of thing like a wooden slatted basket I don't know I don't think moss is going to be that bad for it at all. I think it'll keep it nice and happy. These guys like to have moist roots. So there we go. I can feel it sort of firming up as I tuck the moss underneath of it. And remember we're also working with not many um, not many roots here to start with. So hopefully hopefully the roots will grow quickly and um, lock that into place. So, I really only packed moss in a couple spots in order to get everything tight. This plant is now nice and tight. I wonder if you're going to be able to see it. There it is. It's got the division down the center there. You can see each, each half. And yeah, I think it will do good. I didn't actually mean to have the division in the center, it's just sort of the way it worked. I could probably repot it a little bit differently and have these two pieces with it. I would still want them not touching anymore, but I think um, a, th a thinner bit of moss in the middle so I could put a little bit more moss around the edges would have been great instead of just what I sort of did. But I think it's not even too late. Look at that, I can just lift that up. So I, with potting orchids, just remember there's no real well, there is some right and wrong ways, but there's every way's every way is different. So there's always um, surprises and twists and everything you have to figure out. So especially when you're doing something that's not just a generic fowl. So, so especially when you're using a basket you've never used before, but I think it's going to be cool. So that should work work just fine. There we go. Now. The only thing left is these hooks that are on it are clipped on and I'm going to straighten the clips up and then we'll hang it up for you. Okay, I'm just doing up the third clip. I unclipped them all and just um, I'm reclipping them down the center now so that we weren't smashing the leaves as we we're trying to get the basket hanging back up. There we 
There we go. Hook in the middle, and let's just hang it up here on that little hook. I have my um, display hook over here that I hang stuff on when I'm talking to you guys. So I just pulled that down and we can, it's not where it's going to stay of course, but um, there we go. One freshly potted Stanhopia orchid using moss and coconut husk um, basket. I think it looks really good, uh, really natural in there. I think the new roots are going to take off through that moss. You can see the moss is just lightly packed. It'll pack down a little bit with watering, but it'll breathe so nicely through all sides of this that um, I don't think it's going to be a problem with root rot in this case. So anyways, I think that has solved the problem for my troubled Stanhopia. Um, I'm going to put the tag on the counter for now. I've got to make sure to write the date on that of when I repotted it because I always forget. And that way we won't forget again. And yeah, I think it looks really good now. So, I don't know. What do you guys think? Anyways, I hope you like this video. And if you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe to my channel. As always, thanks for watching.